Today is the 67th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. On December 7th, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. On December 8th, the next day, the US declared war against Japan and officially entered World War II. On December 9th, 1941, the next day, Franklin Roosevelt sent US troops against striking auto workers in Englewood, California. It was the first armed action of World War II. 3,000 soldiers with fixed bayonets cleared a one-mile radius around the North American Aviation Company, a subsidiary of General Motors. Roosevelt was the worst strike-breaking president in history. During the depression of the 1930s, hundreds of striking workers were killed, thousands wounded, tens of thousands arrested. Roosevelt supported the most brutal dictators in the world, threw thousands of Japanese into concentration camps, and contributed to the slaughter of tens of millions around the world, all while protecting record profits for American corporations. Why am I raising this? Because today, as we stand on the verge of a new depression, a lot of very well-meaning people are waiting for Barack Obama to take office and are hoping for a new New Deal. Well, unfortunately, their wish is about to come true. The notion that the New Deal helped working people is a myth. Then as now, the bloody wheels of the war machine grind on regardless of who is in the White House. Ask yourself, where are the voices of outrage about the billions of dollars being given to auto corporation as a reward for laying off thousands of workers and cutting retiree benefits? Where are the voices that say, bring the troops home now so that we can provide health care and education for all those who need it? Well, those voices are not in Washington. They're here. Look around you. The creation of industrial unions during the 30s and 40s came about because millions of workers self-organized militant sit-down strikes and actions against the government, not by the government. The eight-hour day, the right to organize a union, the end to the war in Vietnam, the right for us to stand here today and speak out against the war, all these have come from the mass actions of working people. And when you step into the street today, you join those millions. You cease to be someone passively consuming their lies, and you become someone that's making history. And you become somebody that's warm. And it doesn't matter whether you're on the platform speaking, whether you're here representing a group, or whether you're here at a demonstration for the first time. In the street, we all become a collective that is much more powerful than we are as individuals. We don't need a new New Deal. We don't need an old deal, a square deal, or any deals. We need to quit making deals. We need to quit swallowing concession contracts that have never saved one single job. We need to follow the example of the 200 workers who are today occupying the Republic Window and Door Company in Chicago. That is the way forward. We need to take power out of the hands of the ruling class so blinded by greed that they will destroy this planet. We need to place power into the hands of working people and put human needs before profit. We need to stay in the streets demanding that they take every boat, every plane, and go to Iraq and Afghanistan and bring the troops home just as fast as they put them there in the first place. And we will keep marching till we do that. Thank you.